power. I'm going to go over how we put more power into this unassuming little truck than any vehicle we've owned previously. Okay, so first things first, the installation. The installation of an electrical system, especially in a full-time truck, can be pretty complex. If you watched our videos with Goose, you know that we had a fair amount of installation done back in the day on that truck. It was all AGM batteries, a little more archaic. On Dusty, our Maltec, we really went for it to have a proper electrical system and installed it all permanently, and we did it ourselves with the help of Zero Declination, thankfully, because uh, they're experts in that. That took quite a bit of time to get it done right and properly. With this truck, having it be mobile, I was shocked at how easy this installation was. It is a box that's from National Luna. Everything is in that box. DC, DC charger, all the outlets are on the front, all weather sealed, ready to go. It fits a Group 31 battery, so we could have up to 125 amp hours from anti-gravity in there. You drop the battery in, you do two bolts that are the connection, right, for the, the box side. You run your cables up to the alternator and you put those two on that end, right? So literally two wires. We received our National Luna Power Pack box, right, just the case, right, with no battery in it, two days before we headed to Mexico. And then the day we left, the anti-gravity battery showed up. So we were kind of cutting this close. And an hour and a half after we put those two together, put them in the truck, we hit the road. And we have not touched it since. So the installation has to be the easiest install I've ever seen of an electrical you know, system, right? The only thing you need to add on top of the power pack is an inverter if you need it. We need an inverter specifically for Starlink. We haven't done a 12 volt conversion, which we're gonna do. Uh, and I really like having nothing running through an inverter if you can avoid it. It uses up a little extra power and, you know, if it's got a fan and it's kicking on, it can be kind of noisy and annoying and it's one more thing to go wrong. But for now, we do have that inverter separately mounted on the side of the power pack. Otherwise, that power pack is your electrical system. Two wires that go up to, to receive the power from the alternator and everything else is handled in the box. So. I really do feel like for the first setup I've ever had, if we're hopping in our FJ40, I could pick up this box and set it in the FJ40. What I'd probably do is have its own two wires that I run and leave in that truck because running the wires and having them sort of nicely done took the most time. Just zip tying them, uh, making sure they were not gonna rub against anything, putting them inside some sheathing, etc. That was probably the most time consuming part of this entire setup. But I just love that an hour and a half install and here we've got more power than any truck I've ever had. Okay, so we've used this power setup now for about 10,000 miles. Been all over Sonora, Baja, Baja Sur, up to Montana, now we're in Oregon. We're driving the truck for 10 hours a day, running it 10 hours a day for work off-road. Um, and so we have plenty of ability to charge, but what we really needed was something to hold all that energy. And so we had a lithium starting battery that you guys saw in a previous video, here's that. And I'll go ahead and put a link up in the corner for that video as well. So we had that anti-gravity starting battery that's 60 amp hours. It's got a low voltage disconnect that'll save itself. That worked really well on our previous truck and saved us when we'd pull the truck out of a shipping container to make sure uh, it hadn't killed the whole system. And there was a parasitic draw, hit the button, restarted the truck, no worries. So that's sort of our backup there. We have the ultimate backup to everything is a small micro start, one of the lithium jump packs. And we just don't use that unless we're backpacking or away from the truck, we don't use that. So that's our ultimate backup. Then the starting battery has a safety, but it's got 60 amp hours in it. Now, the way I currently have it set up, we don't use any of that power for living, but we needed a house battery to run everything else. What we started with was one of those small little power packs. It was also from anti-gravity. Uh, I'll go ahead and put the specs of that on the screen here. It was fine for like a weekend trip, things like that. Uh, and then you come back home, plug it into the wall, charge it all the way up, and then it gets you through a camping weekend. It was perfect for full time, living and working out of a truck, it definitely wasn't enough. Uh, so we wanted as much power as we could get. So we went ahead and talked to Paul and the guys over at Equipped Expedition Outfitters. Uh, they recommended we go with a National Luna Power Pack. And the reason we went with the Power Pack over a permanent install under the hood is we wanted the ability, if we hop in our, we have a, a 1976 FJ40, and then as we travel to other countries, we might you know, buy and fly, right? Uh, grab a truck somewhere. We wanted something that was mobile. So there's a lot of advantages to permanently installing under the hood, 
especially when you have as little space as we do. But that portability and easy install was really attractive to us for our current setup. So what we did is we went with the National Luna Power Pack. Uh, I'll put the specs here on the screen as well. It's a 25, meaning 25 amp hours from your alternator or solar can be put through the DC-DC charger into your house battery. For the house battery, we have a 120 amp hour anti-gravity deep cycle lithium. So in our previous truck, we had a, a Maltec, sort of a big camper truck, uh, lots of power usage and stove, really more of an RV. And we had 100 amp hours and it was fine because we had a lot of solar on the roof. And we really just found that to be plenty sufficient, especially when solar is kicking in so much. On this truck and with the advancements they've had in lithium batteries, it's now 120 amp hours in the same package as our old 100 amp hour. So it's nice to see it progressing forward. You can get a 125 amp hour battery, but what you lose in gaining that five amp hours is a heater. And so just in case we mount this battery under the hood, these lithiums are good for so long. Uh, they're useful life anyways. If we were to mount it under the hood, I'd want to have that internal heater so it's always able to take a charge. So we went with the 120 amp hour deep cycle. It's got the internal heater and it regulates everything that's going on with it. Even with our old one that didn't have the internal heater, it wouldn't accept a charge if it was too cold. So it would wait until the battery warmed up uh, to accept a charge. So with that battery, we had it inside the truck, inside of a sandwich, closed cell foam, you know, uh, box essentially on the back of a truck. So it was pretty well insulated, so it never really got too cold. With this battery, we could put it under the hood, which is really nice uh, to be able to do that with lithium now. Um, so I'll go ahead and show you a little bit of what we've done and then talk through how we use our power. All right. Check this out, come around here and take a look at this. We have power. <laughs> 120 amp hours in a group 31, so that's 20% more battery than we had in the last group 31 we had. And then it's all going inside this National Luna power pack that we got from Equipped. So it's got DC-DC charger in here, tons of charging ports, USB, 12 volt, everything. And then a monitor to watch it here, but the battery of course has Bluetooth in it. So I'm sure while driving, you can look down, sort of, I'll mount this maybe in between us or something like that near the center console, but you can always pull up the, the app, like let's say you're sitting outside the truck at camp and just check on the battery, make sure it's doing okay. So this is insane amount of power. I'm gonna go over how we use our power. As you might be able to see, that little tiny box on our roof that's hard to even notice is Starlink. We have it inside of a star mount system and it cuts off all of the motors that tilt it and move it and puts it inside a little box. I'll do a separate video on our review of both the box from them and Starlink, but that's drawing something like three amp hours every hour, and we leave it on full time. At first we had it set, uh, we, we would just shut it off, shut everything off, pull the plug on it overnight. Now I have it set to essentially go in sleep mode where it doesn't use any power from midnight to 6 a.m. And then we just leave it on the rest of the time um, because we have so much power and we drive so much. So we're always charging it. So that's one usage. The second that's constant is our fridge. So our fridge, it's probably 90 degrees out here in the mountains, we're in the Steens mountain range of Oregon at the moment. And so it's gonna use a little more power than when we were in sort of Northern Montana and it was a bit cooler, but that's running 24 seven. Um, those are our two sort of constant draws, right? It, that, that are always present. When we were down in Mexico, it was really hot and we left the truck for six days. So five days, six nights. And we were on a sailboat learning how to sail. We had the Starlink obviously off and stowed inside. And that fridge ran the whole time. When we got back to the truck, the lithium battery was just about dead. And so it was kind of nice to know that even just the fridge, we could get a whole week in a really hot environment out of that 120 amp hour battery. If you're thinking, why the heck don't you have solar? I agree in, in a certain scenario, we would need to add solar. I enjoy having the clean roof on this truck too much to add it right now. And we just don't need it. We drive every day. And then when we do have days off, we stay in the same camp a couple days. That battery, 120 amp hours, is more than enough to get us through a couple days, even four or five days. So we just don't need it yet. But yes, for a full-time setup like ours, at some point you're gonna wanna add solar. So there's always some power coming in. And I'm sure just even a small solar array would take care of the fridge usage and it would negate that. So we don't have any solar right now, but how we're living and how much we're working each day off-road running this truck, it's just, it's just not necessary. So we're not running any solar, but with all that, we find in the mornings, the, the fridge and the, the Starlink usage 
assuming we're not doing any computer editing, charging our drones and our cameras, we're probably at 80% battery in the morning, so about 20%, and that's charging phones and stuff, but, but none of our other items. If we're editing video for YouTube, if we're working, we, we also work on our computers for another job, charging drones, uh, all these different items, and there's a lot of work equipment. There's a work laptop and some GPSs that we use as well, some tablets. Then we might be down to like 65, 70% uh, in the morning, and that's after sitting for, let's say, a full day and night, all that work usage. So that's about where we're at. I know that's really rough and that's not mathematical, so you have to figure out your own usage, but we're on the heavier side of users, I'd say, because of YouTube and all this equipment that we have. With this setup and all the anti-gravity batteries, you have an app that works with them, so you can see the status of the battery, you can see what charge it's taking in. Uh, that way, if there's any issues, you know, wait a minute, this should be taking in 25 amps, the truck's running, nothing's coming in, something's loose, something has rattled, uh, or there's some sort of an issue. So we haven't had any issues, but I'd love that I can look at that and just make myself feel a little better before I shut the truck off at the end of the day, that the battery is at 100%, everything had been working, and we're good to go. Especially if we're going to leave the truck and park it for a couple of days somewhere and not be near it, I'd like to know that the fridge is going to be running and all of our food in there is still good. All right, uh, although a truck has plenty of power, that doesn't mean we always keep it in our camera. So the camera cut off there at the end when I was doing yeah. a bit of a summary. So two <laughs> days later, Tim and Kelsey are going to summarize it for you. So what do you think of it? It is just so awesome that you don't have to think about it. We have enough power. It's so simple. Uh, you could charge laptops, phones. Uh, the fridge is always running. You just don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. And that's super nice not to not to even think about it. It is, just like what Kelsey's saying, having an excessive amount of power is nice. Having the right amount is good. Yeah. I would say the 100 amp hour in the Maltec with all of the lights and fans and so much more usage of electricity yep. was sufficient and I didn't like think I wanted any more. Mm -hmm. But the 120 in here, it, almost it feels, feels like, like double. double. Yeah, yeah. Which is because weird. we just have less drawing on it, right? Yeah. So it's, 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 it's a relative amount to how much you use. It's nice to have a lot because that way when you do leave the truck, I never thought it would actually run the fridge for a week while we were sailing. In really hot weather. Today, really hot weather crazy. so yeah. that that's just really nice so I knew that if I added 100 watts of solar to that it would probably break even and we'd come back to a 98% battery yep. so it's a really nice setup one thing I forgot to mention is it does have the ability to plug solar directly in so it's already got the solar charge controller in that power pack yep. so it's ready for it and it's just as easy as the main install plug yep. it in you're done now that's feeding into it and the solar charge controller as well as the battery uh sort of battery monitoring system internally in the battery yep. will both manage that and everything will be fine so i think that pretty much takes care of it uh one other super important thing don't forget we have a discount code if you're buying something from anti-gravity yes. so whether you're buying a power pack big deep cycle battery a little motorcycle battery whatever it's dirt sunrise it can be uppercase lowercase doesn't matter yep. just one word it's 10 percent off dirt sunrise so yep which can be a lot if it's a big expensive battery yep. um but uh, yeah, I think that sort of summarizes it for us. Thanks for coming along. Yeah. And we'll see you next time. Bye.